Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. What we'll be talking about today is um, approvals within Business Central and uh, I thought it'd be interesting to run through the Power Automate connector within BC. Um, so you can use the Power Automate connector in Business Central to do your approvals and in fact many other things in Business Central. Um, but you can also do your approvals within Business Central as well. So um, I guess we'll do uh, another video on um, the uh, approval setup within Business Central. Um, but today uh, we'll be focusing on approvals within BC using Power Automate. So first things first, we need to go ahead and set up our approvals. And I've already done that on this particular environment. Um, but what I'm going to do is let me just raise a new quote here and I'm just going to pop a vendor on this and I'm just going to pop a line on this. Just put in a quantity of one. Um, so just raised a new purchase quote. Uh, we've got our vendor Fabricam and then I've picked my Athens desk with a quantity of one direct unit costs of 506.60. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be talking about Power Automate approvals today. And uh, what I'm going to do here is come up to the top here for, for um, Automate. I'm going to go into Power Automate and I'm going to show you some of the options that I have available here. Okay, um, so you can do a number of different things with Power Automate and Business Central. You may have noticed that you've got this Automate action on a number of different pages in Business Central. So um, you can have triggers on many pages in Business Central to use Power Automate, okay? Um, and if I go into Create Approval Flow here, um, what this will do is it will bring up um, a page on which I've got a few different options now. So you can see I've got different um, um, sort of options to set up my approvals. I've got Request Approval, for Business Central Purchase Quote, First Response, Request Approval for Business Central Purchase Quote, Custom, and so on and so on. I won't go through them all, okay? Now, what I can do is start going through the wizard here, and you see it's sort of building my connections to the different applications, so Business Central, Approvals, Outlook, and Office 365 Users. I can go edit in advanced mode, which what that would do is it would load up Power Automate and it would allow me to edit the approval flow um, in, uh, in, in, in Power Automate itself. Now, let me just go back and you can pick other um, um, sort of flows here. So these are just the template flows, guys. I should mention you can create your own flow if you want to by coming up here and saying create a flow, okay? Um, but if I go to this one just before moving on, you'll notice that this one has Microsoft Teams, right? So as opposed to sending uh, an approval notification via Outlook, as we're going to do shortly, you can send a Teams notification for that as well. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to get at here is you can set up your approvals to work in a few different ways by using the templates, or you can go down your own route if you want to by just creating your own flow. Now, let me just close this down for a second and I want to show you some of the other things so I can go create an automated flow here. And what this is, is just using Power Automate, some different triggers um, um, that can that can give us different uh, results in Business Central. OK, so here we go. Uh, we've got a, a notify on Teams when a customer is blocked in Business Central, right? Uh, notify on Teams when a certain sales order is released in Business Central. So you've got a number of different flows that we can set up here and you can see we've got see more templates but again I can create my own flow so I'm coming in from the purchase quote page here guys but you see it's giving me options for all of the different types of, uh, of flows that we can set up so um, just have a play there guys you know um, I'd encourage you to do that in a sandbox environment first um, but it's uh, really quite interesting some of the stuff that you can do connecting Power Automate to Business Central now. Um, so one of the things that I haven't shown you in this video because I've done it already on this environment is that the first time that you try and use Power Automate on your environment, you have to accept a disclaimer. Um, it's just a few steps that you go through within Business Central itself. When you come to this menu, you won't see these options here. You'll just see um, a sort of a disclaimer menu that you need to go through and accept. And once you've done that, you can then go ahead and start using your um, Power Automate connector within BC. 
Okay, so um, as mentioned, I've created a flow here um, as part of the, uh, the, the sort of uh, functionality that I'm demonstrating. If I go into manage flows here, uh, it's going to take me off into Power Automate. And here I've got the flow that I've set up for this video. Uh, if I go into my flow here, it just gives me a bit of information. So we are now within Power Automate, you can see here on the top left. Um, and if I go into edit here, I can review the lower level details of my flow, okay? So this is put together by a template here, guys, but you can see the general gist of what it's doing. When a purchase document approval is requested, get the record, get the user details, start and wait for approval, and so on and so on, okay? Now, this is an approval template, but I do know that you can start getting a little bit more complex with this. You know, I've heard of sort of line level approvals being possible using Power Automate or approvals based on different tables um, being uh, being possible. So for example, you could put some sort of a, a user hierarchy, user matrix somewhere in Dataverse or in Business Central, and you could use your Power Automate flow here on screen to reference that table and send off approvals based on that particular um, methodology. I guess just depends how you want it to work, right? Um, whereas in this particular example, just because it's simple for myself, um, I'm just sending the approval to my own user, right? So I'm just so I can show you on video how it works. I'm sending the approval to myself as a user. Okay, so let me go back into Business Central here and I'm just going to go to my purchase quote. Um, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and say request approval. And I'm going to say send approval request. Okay, so what that will do is it will change the status of my um, purchase quote to pending approval. And what I should do now is I'll just show you in quote and approvals here, where typically you would get your um, your entries for your, your approval. So you would see approval entries up at the top here. We are now in flow entries, okay? Um, so because we're using the Power Automate approvals for our purchase quotes, we are in the flow entry screen. And you can see a bit of information here. It tells me my record is 1005. It's been initiated by myself, admin user. Response is pending and the notification status is sent. Now, another thing that I should show you before I go off and, uh, and actually approve this document is uh, within Business Central, you can set up approvals using workflows. Power Automate approvals also sit within this same screen, but you have under purchase documents, a purchase document approval workflow where the source is Power Automate. Okay, you see that's the one that I've got enabled. That's the one that we're working with. But you can also have, of course, purchase document approval workflows from where the source is Business Central itself. And uh, if I just go into there, you'll see it's uh, yeah, it's quite straightforward. It's quite simple within Business Central and the workflow here, but that's, I guess, because all of the complex work happens within Power Automate. Okay, so let me go back to my purchase quote here. You can see the status is pending approval. And if I come into my Power Automate now, and if I go into approvals here, I'm just going to hit refresh on this screen and what we should hopefully see is my approval come through okay so you can see my purchase quote approval request has come through here and if i go into that i can see a little bit more detail see i've got my approval notification the requester the date time the link to take me through to the document and then i can choose my response and I can add a comment in here as well. Okay, so let me just cancel that for now. And what I wanna do is just jump into my email inbox for my system admin user. And you can also see here that I've had an email from Microsoft Power Automate. And it's basically telling me that I have a document outstanding approval, right? So again, I've got a link here that will take me back to my purchase quote and I can go ahead and I can say approve or I can say reject from here. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to say reject and say for my demo. Okay, so I'm going to say submit.
Now, this is a little bit confusing here because I'm going to receive the email, the rejection email back to the um, the email that I'm in. And that's just because um, I'm the uh, requester and I'm the approver. Obviously, it wouldn't like wouldn't work like that uh, necessarily in a live environment. But you see here, I've got an approval request uh, for system administrator was rejected and I've got the comments and so on as well. I can go to that record in Business Central. And uh, I guess you can change these templates as well, guys. I've, I've not really sort of um, done much on this um, within uh, within this demo. But anyway, let me go back to Business Central now. And this time, what I'm going to do, sorry, first is you notice the status there is still pending approval. I'm going to hit F5 and the status changes back to open because it's been rejected. OK, so if I go into quote and approvals now, we'll just review what's happened there. So we can see that the record remains the same, but the response is reject. OK, so again, I can go ahead and send that for approval now. It's going to say pending approval. And I'm just going to come into Power Automate and do it this time just so you can see how it works in there. Again, I'll press F5 and I'll just give it a second for that approval request to come through. And now if I come into my Power Automate, I can see I've got an entry here for my um, purchase quote approval request. I can click the detail. I can again see that it's purchase quote 1005, the date and time. And this time I'm just going to go ahead and say approve and then confirm. So this time I did that from within Power Automate, whereas last time I did that from my email inbox. OK, um, but now if I go back to purchase quote 1005, status is still pending approval. Again, I'm going to hit F5 on that. And you'll notice now that the status is released. OK, so that purchase quote is now approved. So really, that's everything that I wanted to show you in this video, guys. I mean, um, what I will say is you can do approvals within Business Central itself. It just depends um, sort of on, uh, you know, what what the approval methodology is, what how you want it to work. You know, that will sort of drive the technology that we decide to use when we do when we're deploying these uh, these approvals. Um, and I will do another video on approvals within Business Central itself, just so you can see how that works. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how it works in conjunction with Power Automate. So um, thanks very much for watching, guys, and uh, I will see you on the next video. Take care.